Okay, fam. I hope I hope that this works tonight. I feel like the enemy is so mad with me right now because of the fact that I'm talking about a really sensitive subject. So if you're on tonight, just know that I got this insane video this morning. So it actually prompted me to talk about a story that occurred in my life many years ago as a music manager, you know, doing management for a particular artist and things of that nature many years ago, a Nigerian African artist. I'm not putting his name out because I don't want to be sued, but just know that I am literally talking about a very sensitive topic tonight for the ladies, right? Because oftentimes we as sisters, we go into situations blind. So if you're watching tonight, understand this is not to tarnish anybody's reputation, but it's to let the sisters know that there are some men out there that are doing some real wicked stuff. There's a lot of DL brothers out there. There are some men whom have been either touched inappropriately, raped, molested, like females, right? And I know this is hard to go into right away, but because of timing's sake, I just wanted to get into this topic real quick. I will uh, post it up, you know, on YouTube afterwards. If you're not following me on YouTube, please follow me, excuse me, please follow me on YouTube, The Anaya A Show, T-H-E-A-N-I-Y-A-A -A -A Show. And that's on Facebook. Um, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, it's on all those platforms, the Anaya A Show. So let's just jump into it because I don't have that much time um, tonight. So this morning, I was just minding my own business, drinking my water and minding my business when a brother of mine, a good friend who I've known for years, sends me a video clip, fam. My brother sends me a video clip and literally it was of Jaguar Wright. If you guys know anything about Jaguar Wright, excuse me, Jaguar Wright, she is like, uh, I want to say she is the, the person in the media, um, in the music industry who has been doing a lot of talking, who tells a lot of the industry's business. And here's the funny part. She's never wrong. Jaguar Wright has been hitting every nail on the head. And when she exposes people, she goes straight for the juggler. So a lot of people know a lot, but there are signs. Flexi Lexis, tell us more. Okay, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, let's talk about it. Flexi Lexi, tell us a lot, but there are signs. Tell us the signs, because I'm reading the comments tonight, and we're going to get right into this. Tea. Because Jaguar Wright is somebody that has been telling the industry business because she don't give a damn. Jaguar just goes right in and she lets it be known that these people are doing X, Y, and Z. And she started off her campaign um, basically going in about somebody. Child, I don't remember, but let's go to present day. So talking about download brothers, we have download brothers everywhere. Just like we have sisters that are lesbians that are sleeping around with their girlfriends and different things like that. Sex is natural. Sex is natural, fam. But when you do it in a closeted way or like when you have the brothers that are sleeping around with women, multiple women and mm -hmm. men, but they're trying to cover up their actions by sleeping with multiple women, while they're sleeping with men and they're carrying diseases back and forth and things of that nature, that's when your girl Anaya A has a problem. That's when I'm like, now nah, let's talk about it because I often see things, I often hear things, um, but either way, I don't always talk too much about stuff because I know this is an uncomfortable situation. But the reason I had to talk about it tonight is because when I saw that video clip this morning, it literally triggered a story that I should have told you guys many years ago, but I didn't because I never had the right opportunity but we got time tonight. So let's go back to the video. What is the video? The video is Miss Jaguar Wright, again, an industry person. She sang and had, you know, um, different records and different CDs out and things like that. And she was doing very well at some point in her life, but I guess she just let the mania and the craziness get to her. So she just started spilling all the tea on everybody. And as we can see, her life has taken a definite different toll or what have you. 
Um, and we want to definitely hear from you guys. So leave your comments and let's talk about this. If you're a download brother, you want to talk about it and how you feel when you steal these girls, uh, men, we could talk about that too. If you are a woman and it's happened to you, child, talk to your girl, Anaya A, because I want to hear that part too. So she's been spilling the tea. And this morning, the video was of guess who? The newest person, the newest person that Jagger Wright is saying is a down low brother and is having sex with other men in the industry is none other than 50 Cent. And fam, I usually wouldn't talk about this because 50 Cent is a straight like gangster killer. Like he might find your girl or whatever. And I literally am kind of scared for my life while I'm talking about this, but I can't be because like, he's not going to come after me. I know that I'm not the one who put this information out, but why am I scared of 50 Cent is this part here. She made so many valid points, fam. My girl said, Literally, have you noticed how 50 is always coming against the gays? Have you noticed how 50 is always like talking about like P. Diddy when P. Diddy try to force him to go shopping and different things of that nature? And my girl also said something that was so insane. She said she saw the video clips, fam. She said she saw the videos because there are videos out there of he, uh, excuse me, a 50 cent doing whatever it is that he's doing with these boys. And the reason I say boys is because she made an allegation. And I said, this is allegedly, she made an allegation that the person that 50 was doing different things was with, was that young brother who had like, he was like a one hit wonder. It's in a video child. I don't want to get into it because my heart is actually broken for the young man because at the end of the day, he was a young rapper for real who literally didn't stick around the industry for very long. So I'm wondering now if what she's saying has any validity to it because at the end of the day, I'm going to look up his name so that I can have it so that you guys can definitely know who I'm talking about. Um, I think his name, wait, you know that song that child don't get me started i'm old so i can't even remember but um i can't remember that, that song right now but i'm gonna remember i'm gonna look for it so that i can definitely um post it and then or i'm not gonna post it because i don't want 50 to come after me but what i am gonna do is i'm gonna let you guys know the name of the young man for sure right um because that is insane that this young man has been said to have slept with Diddy or Diddy, not Diddy, excuse me, 50, literally touched him at a very young age. I think like at 17 years old. But I'm, while I'm on here with you guys, I'm going to check real quick. If you guys have any thoughts about this download brother situation, please let me know. And the reason I'm talking about it again is because it triggered something. As of late, it seems like I am remembering a lot of things of my past that I had, you know, suppressed and everything. No, I wasn't one of those females that was with a down low brother. Don't even think about that part right there, fam. I'm not one of them sisters that has been with no down low brothers. I love men. Um, the person that, oh, Soldier Boy. I did the whole, oh, Soldier Boy. Ah, okay, Soldier Boy. So the whole thing is 50 Cent was like raping or like molesting, you know, Soldier Boy or whatever. And Soldier Boy apparently was super young. He was maybe 17 at the time or whatnot. The bottom line is this, right? Like a lot of bad things happen in the music industry. They say that it's Illuminati or what have you. But here's what I want to share too about like the Illuminati, you know, special, um, you know, money um, situations, like when people want to become rich and stuff like that. Remember the devil, in order for you to make a lot of money unconventionally, like not just working hard for it, but you have, you're a creative or whatever, like the devil has all these little things set up for you because he knows that you're interested in doing something that the average person doesn't have access to. So it is in my humble opinion that Soldier Boy being a young brother thought, okay, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to get into the music industry. But he didn't realize what kind of predators that he was going to find himself working with or working against. Because at the end of the day, if you care about the young man, if you want him to succeed, you're not going to put him in situations like that. So apparently I got this video, like I literally was not asking for this video today, fam. It literally was sent to me and it was a 50 cent. And one of the things for certain, I'm gonna go back to my story real quick, but one of the things for certain, two things for certain, one thing's for sure, two things for certain, 50 is always like bashing 
the gays. And I'll say this, I have an issue with the trans community, not because I am, you know, transphobic or anything like that, but I have seen what the trans have done. I've seen what the gays have done. I've seen what a lot of gay men have done um, to people. Like I said, a lot of down low brothers in situations growing up, uh, you know, I was always around a lot of gays because like my best friend was gay, which I never knew that he was gay. That's another story for another time. Um, but we would go to the gay clubs and everything. And one of the things that I really noticed was a lot of the gays want to turn people out. You know, they want to touch the men that are straight. They want to touch the women that are straight and things of that nature and have, you know, sexual exploitations with those that say that they're straight. So there is a spirit there when it comes to homosexuality. I'm not going too far deeply into that whole thing, but just know that I've seen a lot. I've heard a lot. I've been involved in certain things. Y'all, my life has been a whole movie, but here's the bottom line. Now I'm going to move forward to this. When I was in management and I was managing a particular artist, from Nigeria. First of all, may I say, may I say for the record, I never knew that there were, and I know some people are going to say I'm so stupid, but I don't care what nobody says because it's the truth. I never knew there to be gay Africans or gay Jamaicans. I've seen gay Haitians um, in the community and stuff like that. So I knew a lot of the gay Haitians were already in the community, but I thought too that if they were involved in voodoo and like, you know, sacrificing people and goats and whatever, chickens or whatnot, then that's why they were gay because there were different sacrifices, money rituals, whatever. Like I said, I know a lot, I've seen a lot, but I'm not gonna go into that too deeply. But I thought in my mind that there were no gay Africans or no gay Jamaicans because the Jamaican people be like them body boys and that's a whole like Caribbean thing, but it's predominantly the Jamaicans that don't dig, you know, gay stuff at all. For the African community, I was just like, there ain't no gay Africans because black men from Africa don't subscribe to that. You know, black men are pretty strong warriors from Africa. They don't subscribe to that nonsense. So I thought there were no gay Africans. So silly me, I was managing an artist. Now this is like, I want to say almost 20 years ago. I like told, I've told you guys before, I've been in this music industry thing for many years. A lot of the stuff I do is behind the scenes because some of the stuff I've done and people I've worked with, I don't like it to be known. Like for what reason, right? So I, I stay real low key behind the scenes. So when I met this particular artist, He's an African brother from Nigeria. I thought the world of him. He approached me. He approached my sister. If you guys are watching and you remember this story, you know, you can leave a comment. If you don't want to and you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to leave a comment. My sister's biracial. She's a gorgeous young lady. We were in Atlanta at the time. So we both were out and about. I was gorgeous too, but he wanted a particular look, the exotic you know, biracial look. So he was like, can I please work with your sister? Can she be my main model? I was like, absolutely. Cause I was modeling for somebody else any damn way. So I said, okay, no problem. I put my sister right in front so that she can actually model in front of this man and the whole community in downtown Atlanta fam. He was singing so good. He had all these love ballads, but not just about love, but about God. The man was singing about God. The man was singing about prosperity and beauty and not just love and like relationships. The man was singing about stuff that made your heart melt, right? I was like, oh my God, this African man, he's doing it big. Well, we were in the process of putting his music video together. And as a PR person, a manager, somebody who knows the entertainment industry very well, I literally was able to meet his needs and bring together his vision, right? He wanted us to travel to South Florida. I wanted us to go to Jamaica or the Bahamas. He was like, he'd prefer South Florida. No problem. Let's make it happen. Upon us traveling together, going everywhere together. And mind you, he had so much money because you know the Nigerians, they be having that buck, honey. Honey, let me tell you guys something. I'm sitting in the Bima waiting for him and he gives me his phone. This man done forgot that he was gay. <laughs> oh my God. This man done forgot that his boo thing, which was a whole black man, was supposed to be sending him messages of his penis. This man literally forgot that I had no idea he was on the DL and I knew all about his wife. 
gay boxy boy stuff is not cool. It's not cool in my mind. Like when it's like open or whatever, if people know that you're gay and like if you're a man and you want to have sexual excursions with other men, have at it. When you're a female, it's so different. But when it comes to men and you sticking your stuff into different places and different things like that, honey, you better let that woman know. Let me tell you something. I already knew his wife. His wife was a beautiful black woman. I'm not sure exactly what country she was from or whatever. And she was just a gorgeous woman. And that's why I'm talking about this today because it's the secrecy of it all. So his boy toy or whatever sends him nudes of himself, his, you know, stuff down there and all this kind of stuff, saying a bunch of sweet nothing to him in these messages. And I have the phone. Now, I didn't want to open up any messages because I'm not nosy like that. I don't have time to be in people's business like that, especially since I didn't have, you know, the authority to go into the phone. So I didn't go into the phone. You know, when you get a message, fam, and you see everything in the message because it's right there, that's what happened. Everything was popping up because the phone was in my hand. So I didn't even have to open the message. No messages were opened by Anaya because they all were showing up. So why am I talking about this tonight, right? My homeboy who sent this video clip of Jaguar Wright and how 50 Cent was sleeping with Soldier Boy literally did something to me. It triggered something in me because at the end of the day, I recall that moment so vividly, even though it was like 20 years ago, right? Imagine you're thinking this man is a Christian man because I was completely oblivious to like church people, Christian people, people that profess the faith in this lifestyle. The gays that I knew were in the clubs with the gays that I knew. When it comes to trans women and men and different things like that, I knew all that stuff since I was a little girl because my mom and dad were so liberal. They would let us go partying. I was clubbing at like 12 or 13 years old. So nothing surprised me. But when you say you are a man of God, when you say you're a leader and you want to make these music videos and you want to share your content with the world, and then you sitting up here having sexual exploitations and things like that, and men are sending you dick pics and video clips and talking about what he about to do to you tonight. Child, your girl Anaya A was not ready. And mind you, like I said, I've seen a whole lot in my life. <laughs> I wasn't like no virgin. Like, I wasn't like, oh my God, this is like so appalling. The reason it was appalling was because of whom the person was that was receiving this information. And then obviously the, the back and forthness of it all, because nobody's just going to randomly send you dick pics and be like, oh, look at my dick. No, nobody does that. Nobody does that in life. That means you have a relationship with this person. Y'all have been in communication. So fast forward, when old boy got to the car, your girl Anaya A was like, um, yeah, the person that we were supposed to be speaking with didn't call or, you know, I couldn't get them or whatever. And I just handed him his phone. And due to the fact that I didn't have to open up the phone, it didn't look like I went in the phone and saw anything. So I let him do what he do, um, do what he did or whatever. I never mentioned it. Um, moving forward, we did the, mu the music video shoot on the Treasure Post in uh, Fort Pierce, Florida. I'm not going to tell you the person's name. And you can't find the video because he went against your girl and I ate in a really sordid way. And this is another reason why I often have a problem with men that behave like that, right? They have this animosity towards females a whole lot, right? So this dude literally cursed me out and acted crazy and did all this stuff when he was in the complete wrong about the production. And he actually still needed me for all my contacts with BET, MTV, all the stations I was working with, the even the Treasure Coast community that had major connections to the media entities that he was looking to get his music video played at. And the worst part about it, and I'm going to tell it straight up, is when he brought a horse into the scenario, which was a major insurance liability, and he went behind my back and did something of that sort. And of course, I was angry because here's the bottom line. We talked about it. You didn't want to get the insurance for it. You thought it was cute to be this cunning and decisive, excuse me, decisive. And it was something that we already had discussed. So what is it that I'm supposed to say? Yay, you could have got somebody hurt on a beach with a horse. 
when I say something, I mean it. Like if there's rules and protocols for us to follow, I'm not one of these people that's going to go back and forth. But either way, I was being cordial. I was being nice until the end of the shoot. And guess what, fam? Just as life would have it, he cut up and cussed out and did this and that, which I think it was the gay side about him anyway, because typically when you act like that, it's because, you, you know, you got something up your ass, clearly. Um, <laughs> um, so fast forward with that, guess what, fam? He literally called me back and needed me again. And your girl and I, it was like, deuces for life. Lose my number, lose my name. The video production is not going to be circulating with my contacts. Act like you never knew me. Leave me alone. He called. He called, he messaged, he pleaded, he begged, he, he apologized. When I tell you apologies, messages, money, because again, he had a lot of money, fam, but it doesn't work like that because I never needed your money to begin with. This opportunity was to showcase your talent because I thought you were a great person. So I wanted to showcase your talent and make sure you got your shine. I didn't need your money because I had money. Matter of fact, I had a lot of money right then when I was younger doing my little thing thing. But anyway, that's what I wanted to share. So now we have it in the media that our boy 50 is said to be on the opposite side of the field playing games with sticks and balls and stuff. Like I am just flabbergasted. Like I wasn't prepared this morning. You know why I wasn't prepared too? Was because of his constant belittling and constant harassment of those that choose that lifestyle. It makes perfect sense. And here's why. People that possibly were raped or molested or touched inappropriately or what have you, they have certain desires and feelings because here's the bottom line when it comes to gay men, too, fam, or men in general, because this is actually like a scientific thing, which I was stunned about when I found out my damn self. The gooch or the gout or whatever, where like the in between, you know, we all adults. And if you're not adult, tell your kid to get off this platform. The part between the booty and the nutsack or whatever, I don't know the you know the name, like name, what scientific or whatever. But anyway, that part between is really super sensitive, and men like that part to be played with. Plus, men have orgasms apparently through the rectum now don't ask me why i'm not the one who stated that that should be a thing we got to talk to jesus about that when we get to heaven praise the lord and i am not opposed to men having those sensations because if they like it they like it that's not my business but what is my concern and let's take 50 cent for example be having mad females like his last chick was cuban link which was a beautiful island woman and he just dumped her. And 50 has like this real like hype personality where he legitimately has relationships with these women and then he drops them like bad habits. Have y'all noticed that? Like he'll be with v Vivica Fox, got her all sprung. Vivica is like 66 right now and Vivica is still not over 50 cent and his penis. You know this, right? I know Vivica from doing a movie with her many years ago. So I know her character and she's super hype. Like even during a funeral scene in a movie, Vivica Fox is like, girl, when they say cut with the camera, this girl got her flippers on. She has bunny hopping pink sandals on. Like Vivica is one of them chicks. Like, she's not like this proper copathetic chick, whatever. That's not for the BS. Vivica is for the BS. So that's how I know 50 went, put that thing down on Vivica, laid her out, and she still sprung 25 years later. She's 66. He's maybe 45. That means that thing is good, good. But notice what he did to her. Left her hanging like somebody off a tree somewhere. Child. And I hate to sound like that, but I'm sounding like that because if you have a man that's good to you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, sexually, you know what I'm saying? Making you feel like you're the only thing out here that's doing real good for him. And then he drops you like a bad habit and moves on to the next. That really messes with your mental. That's why females don't have the same capacity of sleeping around with many men and not getting sprung 
Because when that thing is laid out in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and that thing is fire, and that thing is hitting, praise the Lord, Jesus is real. Where you think you're going? Where you think my stuff is going? This is why I'm real copacetic about talking to the females sometimes and letting the females know, don't be letting everybody hit that thing, sis, because you're going to mess around and go to jail when they out here in these streets. All right, guys, well, that's all I really have for tonight. I'm still sad that if this is even true about 50 and, you know, little boy named Soldier Boy, it breaks my heart. But again, I wouldn't be surprised that this has a Heard, and it's continuing to occur, as we can see in the case of B. Diddy and all these other people, because at the end of the day, remember, like my Dominican neighbor says, remember, it's a blood sacrifice. In the industry, you got to do certain things to stay on top. You get it? You catch it? There's things that you got to do to stay on top. And that's not just in the music industry, entertainment industry. We're talking about in the church industry too, fam. I don't want to get too deep, but I'll put it like this. Church, politicking, leadership positions. You know what I mean? Some people ride that thing to the top. You know why? Because they know the power of their sexual libido. They know that if they do certain things to get to where they're going, they're going to stay there because A, they're able to manipulate the situation B, they have something over somebody. And C, they done lay that thing down so good and they know how to keep their damn mouths quiet. Guess what? Ain't nobody saying nothing. So with that being said, don't think it's just in the uh, industry for the music and the entertainment and things of that nature, the art industry, the art world or whatever. Nah, son. It's in a lot of industries. Because when you want to get to the top, some people do anything. Some people sell their soul to the devil. That's why they have that saying out there. Some people don't care. They will literally sell their soul, sell their children, sell anything to get to the top. Are you one of them? I sure as hell ain't. I sure as hell ain't because I was supposed to do quite a few things to get and stay on the top. And I sure enough turned that stuff down because guess what? You ain't going to have me looking crazy because again, where that thing thing going once we're done? Huh? You laying up in this bed. I know that. Where you going? You think you're going somewhere? Oh, sorry, you got it all messed up, boo. Because I don't play that. I've been engaged three different times. I married the last one. And I'll put it to you like this. Because that thing was hitting. I ain't going to go too deep with it. Say word, son. Wait, girl, I was just talking about this. Sis, Trina, you hear me, sis? Like, it's a lot. So did you see the thing with Jaguar White? Jaguar Wright and 50 Cent and, and Soldier Boy. Is that what you're referring to? Because I need you to jump in tag team back again, honey, because this thing is serious. Soldier Boy was 12 when he joined the music industry. But again, look what happened to Little Wheezy. Little Wayne, Little Wheezy. We see the kiss with Birdman. We ain't, listen to me. This whole thing ain't new, right? But it's just kind of crazy when we seeing it happen like in our faces, like, damn, is that what's really going on? It makes sense, though. It makes a lot of sense. So anyway, I didn't do a lot of sharing. I didn't do a lot tonight. I just wanted to touch on this very sensitive topic because a lot of people playing mad games out there with people's hearts, with people's emotions, but also with people's sexual organs. And, um, and we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful how we move in these streets. We have to be very careful who we let in our beds because sometimes we think it's going to be a, you know, one, two, three, thank you, ma'am, I'm out. But then what happens when you catch a feeling or like multiple feelings or emotions? What happens when you get pregnant? What happens when you catch an STD? The STD thing, honestly, they have so many damn cures and different things to clean up STDs. Like nobody, nobody really is like, I feel like as bothered because especially since when they got the AIDS thing under control, it seems as if, the AIDS thing was the biggest plight, but ever since the AIDS thing 
got this kind of magic pill, you know, to, to fix it or whatever. People ain't really studying the STD thing as much. I could be wrong, but I'm just saying, I don't see it talked about as much. Hey, boo, I need you to chime on in, sis. I see a lot of you watching. Chime on in, Flexi Luxy. Come on now. And Trina, let me know what you're talking about exactly. Which part, Trina? Flexi Luxy, what signs have you seen? Let the women know out there. If you want to join the live, you could do that too. Hold on, let me fix this real quick because it's not even. There we go. Um, Join the live, y'all. Let us know what some of the signs, because let me tell you something. Even though, and I'm going to get close and say this, I don't have, I'll say it like this, I don't have what you call a gaydar. Even though I've been a lot of gays and I've been a lot of um, around trannies and all of that. Some, wait, Wait, I'm going to tell you a personal story, fam. I'm going to tell you a personal story. And I want y'all to come on live. If you want to come on live, the number to dial in, I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to join this live, we have about 15, 20 minutes. Hold on. I can't remember the number. It's been a hot minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can get that number for you. The number is 436-903-4585. If you want to join live, if you want to join live, because I see the comments, I see the likes. But if you want to join the Zoom live right now and share your thought processes, the number again, and you don't need a passcode, is 436 436- 9034585. If you want to talk about the download brothers that you know that you've seen, talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's be 100. I'm going to put this in the messages real quick because we have a few minutes. Let me tell you about this real quick. It is not just the men <laughs> in Atlanta. Okay. In Atlanta, first of all, I'm going to tell you two things, right? So being in the streets, right, y'all have heard my, you know, stripper stories and stuff. I was never a stripper, but I got paid like one, whatever. Um, and I like to tell you guys stuff like this because number one, my mom and dad, like they're the only ones I really fear, but I don't really fear them. My granddaddy, I fear him, but I really don't fear him because he know I'm off the chain because like we come from that type of family. We real open or whatever. And plus, when I let these things out, Jesus forgives me because I asked for Jesus's, you know, what you call forgiveness. So Jesus knows that I'm not a bad person. I just was in the streets a lot. So with that being said, so y'all heard the stripper stories, um, being in Magic City, all these kind of things. A lot of my Magic City people are right here on the Facebook. A lot of people know me from the clubs and everything else. Never got on a strip, stripping pole. My daddy would have beat my butt. But of course, we used to be up in them. Okay. Um, and plus I never want anybody to hold anything, uh, 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 like, excuse me, I never want anybody to hold anything, um, like on my head. Like I say things openly because a lot of people judge you thinking that, oh, you, you, you act like you're perfect. You act like you're a Naya A, such a good person and stuff, but you ain't nothing but a bitch. You've been out here in these streets and stuff. I hear everything. I really do. So I am not one of these people that's going to fake the funk. So real quick, fam. So fast forward. I was out. The first time I'm in a club in the ATL, this is why I don't trust a lot of people. I don't trust a lot of men. I don't trust a lot of things in my face because at the end of the day, fam, men are sneaky, sneaky. And what happened is I'm in the club, right? And I think it was like Bill Scott performance, something so sweet, so nice, you know, this down the third. And it was like, not a situation where it should have been ratchet at all. I'm watching because I'm always watching. Whenever I'm drunk, high, it don't matter. My eyes is always focused or whatever. So I'm standing there, right, with my drink or whatever. And uh, and I don't smoke or drink anymore. So praise the Lord for that. Um, I'm standing there. And all of a sudden, these dudes are, like, passing each other. They both have girls on their arms. And guess what, fam? One taps the booty real quick. The other one, he turned back and looked at it and like they did an eye sig signal thing or whatever. That was basically the code for like, let's meet up later. Bet, done. That was my first introduction to the DL community in the ATL, right? Um, again, when I was in South Florida and stuff, we saw all sorts of stuff, but we were actually in the gay clubs. We weren't in the straight clubs and we would see certain things or whatever. So that was insanity. So that was that. And then for number two, I'm not going to keep y'all too long, but I put the Zoom information on there. If you want to dial it up, you know, you could dial it and then um, you don't have to do a passport or anything. It's open up to anybody right now. The second thing, right, that just real, real cray. A lot of females, especially in communities like the ATL and things of that nature, right, where this type of behavior is really accepted, a lot of females be looking like dudes, like hard body. Bam. 
my homegirl, right? Because I had a lot of gay friends or whatever. And one of my homegirls had like a real best friend or whatever. And of course, she was a lesbian or whatever. And, um, you know, the rest of the crew, we were like straight. I was straight. The other girls were bi. You know, we all were like cool, chilling or whatever. And then we go into the like lesbian or gay club or whatever. And so we all packing in the, the whips. We had like five or six whips. Yeah, you know I mean, you know how it is when you when we were young, hanging out, going to the clubs or whatever. I like five or six whips. And wouldn't you know, here comes this dude person, right? That I had never met before. And I'm like, okay, shawty. Like in my mind, because I'm not like a total pop off. I'm not gonna be like, let me holla. But I thought dude was so sexy. I was like, damn. And you could like see the sexual energy exude off of this person. And so for me, I was like, yes, we're gonna have a great night. Not trying to bang or nothing, but I was just like, yeah, you know I mean, we're gonna have a great night with old boy, because he's the only boy with all of us girls, right? That's my mind thinking it was a woman she was a female she was a female never had the sex change but had everything packed down flat chested is i don't know what but when i thought i saw you know pecs they were really boobies that were really small and i almost lost my mind i was like i have been lusting all night after a woman, ain't no way. And yes, it was a way. So I say all of that to say, my people, that these people out here, they tricky, tricky. They tricky, tricky. So it's not just the men's, it'd be the females too. Thankfully, I was in my sober mind that nothing went too far or went anywhere at all because at the end of the day, like, I'm not one of those females that just, you know, it's just like, wow, like, let me holler at you. Let me tear your clothes off. Let's let's get in the bed. I'm not like that. Thank God. Because if I were, <laughs> baby, that's all I have to say. So those are just two little side note stories that I had to share with you guys. I know you guys have other comments, and I know you guys have been talking about different things on today. Leave your comments. I'm about to jump off because I have some other things I have to attend to, but I had to come on tonight and share about 50 Cent because that threw me off this morning. And the fact that, you know, I met a brother, you know, from Nigeria who had a beard. And, oh, for those that don't know what a beard is, I put it in my commentary earlier. A beard basically is a man that's on the DL that has a wife or, like, girlfriends and things of that nature and pose as if they're straight. And the beard, a.k.a. the female, is their, what's the word? Their disguise. Like, it's their... <clears throat> It's the person that, you know, they show around and, you know, for people not to know their lifestyle, there's a word for that, you know, but who knows at this point what that word is because child, my head is still fried. Like when I see things and hear things, like it takes me like at least two days sometimes to not hear or see things like I am a nerd. So it's going to take me another two days to get over this 50 cent thing. I swear to God, like that's how weird I am. Oh, wait, 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 before I shut down, before I shut down, talking about the gays. So I have a very big love and affinity for a gay. And he is my friend. He's like a mentor. Like he gave me an award and he's super dope. But as of late, he hasn't been my best friend because he's very one-sided on a particular political issue. I'm referring to Congressman Richie Torres. Now, anybody wants to send him this message, they can. They know how much I love him. He knows that I've cried for him like Richie Torres knows that I cried for him when he was getting arrested in like 2016 or 2017 it had to be like 2016 or whatever you know because he has such perfect and beautiful teeth and I ain't never seen politicians getting arrested before and they were arresting Richie Torres and I feel like the public advocate Jumani Williams and some other like politicians or whatever I cried on the sidelines. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life. You know, I've been into the political thing, but I ain't never seen these civil disobedience, like, you know, arrestations and all of that. So I cried for Richie Torres. So why am I sharing this? Follow me. 
as of late, he's talking about this Jewish thing. Palestine is no good. We have to stay focused on Jewish people, Israel, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, every time he leaves a post on Instagram, I'm like, sir, I need you to stop being one-sided about this issue because it's not fair. You know, Hamas has people that are getting worked out as well. Palestine, you know, there's a lot going on, blah, blah, blah. Like, stop being one-sided. I put this information on my Facebook page and stuff like that. So if you know what I'm talking about, then you'll know that I'm very highly upset set with my sexy teeth man Richie Torres presently because he's being one-sided about the Hamas and Israel thing right y'all know that okay bet say less so fast forward one thing I will say about my baby boy though okay is he went after Jorge Jorge no Jorge Santos Jorge Santos a whole lot George Santos, he went after George Santos for months. See, I see a lot of things. I watch a lot of things, but I don't comment on everything. It's only the things that captivate my attention that makes me want to comment. I'll jump in. Because of the fact I didn't know how this Republican cycle George Santos situation was going to come out, I never said anything. Because why jump into that fight when George Santos was able to brainwash convinced, steal elections, steal money, and that fool literally had the nerve, the unmitigated gall, I don't want to laugh, to say he was Jewish as damn so. And I think he went as far, and I don't want to laugh because this is so bad, but this guy, Jorge Santos is going to hell. This guy named Jorge Santos literally said that he had like his mom or grandma or somebody get murked out in the building in 9-11. They found out that Jorge Santos' family is like in Peru or something. Like this man has lied about everything. But I will go and say this as I close. Tonight, as I was getting my nails did, as you can see, we got a new fresh set of nails. As you know, sometimes we got to make it do what it do. They have, I feel in my heart. Now, I'm getting this from a third party, another gay whom I love very much, the Wiley man himself, the Wiley show, Wiley of the Wiley show. Wiley said, and I quote, that they literally have kicked out Jorge Santos from the Republican Party. And for me, that is amazing. And the reason it's amazing is not because he's gay. Who cares about Jorge being gay, a tranny? He, I think he dressed up and went and did some, you know, girly things or whatever. They found that out too. He was lying about, you know, dressing up as a girl and all of that, you know, some tranny stuff. Here's the bottom line. <laughs> this man has lied so much and literally has made our government look so stupid and made the state of New York look more stupid. Like, honestly, I think he was out of Long Island. And that's the embarrassment for me. Like, how dare you be that sick in the head? But then again, if you're that sick in the head, you can do that. Because you're that sick in the head. You get it? So therefore, somebody with this illusion of grandizement, as well as possibly some real neurotic issues or even a little bit of schizophrenia or some kind of you know dual personality disorder who he probably never got checked out literally was able to do what he did because nobody fact checks so we can't blame Jorge Santos for being that crazy he was doing his job Jorge did his job he bamboozled all you dummies but I say that to say, my best friend, you did a great job by calling him out. My best friend again is Congressman Richie Torres. So if you all know the Congressman, tell him I send him much love. Put your pesos, papi, chulo. Te amo mucho. Because you have been calling him out. You have been sticking it to Jorge Santos since day one. And for that, I commend you. On another day, we'll talk about Israel and Hamas. But for now, you get all them points, boo, because you did that, all right? And I know it wasn't easy. I know it wasn't easy because I think this is like probably one of the first times in history something like this has been done. And to call him out, 
against your Republican, you know, you know, counterparts, you know, like you have to have enough. And you did call it out. With that being said, fam, I think we got it. Next time I'm going live, I'm going to give you guys ample warning and time to jump in these conversations. As you guys know, I'd be like, I'm coming on at 8.30, and it'd be like 10.30, and I'm coming on. It's not my fault. Understand, fam. <laughs> I got a one-year-old, and he is whipping my butt. Praise the Lord. But that's okay. I love the little man. He is the love of my life. And my prayer is, that I continue to have more segments and I'll be interviewing many more people very soon. It's just, I got to get my life in order. I got to get him in somebody's daycare class or something. And I have to get my time management together. So pray for your girl, Anaya A, as I shut it down for night. And I pray you all have a great weekend. And again, don't feel any offense. If you feel any offense to what I said tonight, Listen, kick rock with no shoes on, right? Kick rocks, just kick rocks with no shoes on. Like, just have a great night. Yo, don't take offense to what I'm saying. These are my thoughts. These are my views. You know, half of the people that are gay now was probably molested and touched because here's another thing. I was about to shut down, but I got to say this, right? I don't subscribe to people being born gay. I said it. Oh, boy. And I said something really out of pocket. I don't subscribe to it, fam. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the evidence until you show me scientific proof, which you can't show me scientific proof because it has never been really proven that people were born this way. I don't care what you people say. A lot of people that end up gay or trannies and things of that nature have been molested, sexually exploited, abused mentally, physically, emotionally, something that has caused them to want to go to the other side. And that's why we are in the situation we're in. But if you want to debate about it, we can. Okay? I'm open. Hit me up anytime, fam. Have a blessed night. Thank you, big bro, for sending me that information about 50 cents and Mr. Soldier Boy. My heart goes out to Soldier Boy. Boy, I tell you, that's some crazy stuff. Good night, y'all. Deuces. Love you.